Hello Judith, hello Julie. Hello Maria, hello Anna Lime, hello Stephen. I know this is very short notice, but it's been um, like at the moment, the way things are work wise, um, it's quite tricky just to sort of drop everything at 12 o'clock. And to be honest, this isn't like a big painting time of year. This is a big sitting on the computer time of year. <laughs> anyway. Hello, Louise. Absolutely beautiful here today. The sun is just, at the moment anyway, it's just um, like casting light and long wintry shadows right across the valley opposite. And it just makes me think about this. This is like a half finished or half started, I don't know, painting. And it's just like that. I think there's another one here that looks a bit like that. Yeah. I'm trying to think which is needs a bit more doing to it. This is the one that started, remember, with the dream of the colours, the blue, the yellow and the green. That's one of them. And the other one. Hmm. Has vanished. Oh no, that was as well. Both of them. <laughs> Hello, Alison. So, yeah, I'll maybe do a little bit of painting. Do you remember we were, I was working on this um, Indian runner duck painting? And I quite like to do some more in the background and the foreground and also give them a bit more presence in, on, the, on the page. A bit more presence and character. Hello, ja Deb. Deb Chapel. So I'll just tip up. No, I won't. I'll mix the paint first. Mm -hmm. Thinking about the background because I quite like to do um, quite a green background behind this these white ducks but of course a lot of the grass a lot of the leaves have gone from the trees although I do have a green bank of periwinkle in front of me hello Holly Woff how are you congratulations on your slimming world triumph mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Holly, you're so sweet. Oops, move those paintings out of the way so they don't get sploshed. Right, just play around a bit with the background. Can we see? Thank you, I'm so proud. Yeah, so you should be. Just maybe get you a tiny bit closer. I know it's sort of tricky to see because this is um, uh, this drawing board's actually on a bit of a slope. I'm just doing a sort of quite a loose type of idea of a background. That's just somebody responding to my message about sending a couple of small paintings to their home, their current home, uh, 
in The Hague, which is the Netherlands. I actually don't know. Where's The Hague, Lisa? Is it in Holland or Belgium? Netherlands. Yes, yeah, she's a... Yeah, Holland is in the Netherlands, which is quite funny because when you think, oh, I've got a pain in the nether regions. Yeah, it's like quite funny, I think. The nethers. That's what we call them. You know, if you've been cycling for ages and ages, you might say you had a... Your nethers were a bit tender. Well, we would anyhow. How are the nethers, for instance? So yes, I think I might have mentioned before that I have this super clever friend and she's very young as well, but she's, um, she is like, um, I always call her the ambassador and make jokes about Ferrero Rocher, but she works in the, oh, I don't know, the court of human something or others. And she's had post just come back from a posting in Singapore and back to her home in The Hague. So you see, I do know clever and important people. Speaking of clever and important people, wait till you hear. Do you remember I said the other day that Wendy Gray was and stuff? We're literally, we're like that now. She sent me an email today saying how beautiful everything was and how I literally brought light into her life. So there we are. My face like a butterfly. Da, 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 da. I'm going to get a, uh, a Union Jack wraparound on my mini, I think, next. Which won't mean anything to any of you unless you were around in the uh, 70s, probably. <laughs> so doing this really, really simple sort of thing at, like, at this point lifts the white, doesn't it? I think it lifts it. Um, I'm going to get a slightly smaller brush for here where I'm going to do a slightly different uh, very slightly warmed up green. When I say warmed up, I mean it's got a little bit of um, a red in it, like, like a bit more actually. Hmm, there isn't really anywhere to put any more, is there? And that goes, this one's in the foreground, and this one's behind it, so I could do some there. And then that goes, hang on, yeah. I can't work out which is the, which is in the foreground, this one. So that is its sort of breast, and that one's behind it, yep. Sometimes you just got to, Think a bit. So I'm using this as a line for that slightly warmer green. Tiny bit there. And this will do that, so just there. Okay. And then uh, this here. Uh, maybe I will draw on the colour of the gravel outside here for this bit, sort of.
Gosh, can you hear the wind out there? I've had a bit of a busy day already because I'm afraid we have another dog that's unwell, Dorothy, yesterday morning. Dorothy is my beautiful little black and tan uh, miniature dachshund and she, a couple of years ago she had something a bit similar where it was obvious that something just wasn't right. She was very stiff over her back and um, we gave her loxicon while the vet prescribed her loxicon and we thought she might be for the chop because the dachshunds are quite prone to problems with their back unsurprisingly because they're like ridiculously long in comparison to the rest of their body anyway she just looked really stiff and sore and we had some leftover loxicon but it was slightly out of date. Anyway, I rang the vet this morning and managed to go around to see. I went to see um, Roger the vet. <laughs> Who is just so, so nice and so caring. And he said he thought that she had... Uh, done something that she'd probably done before, like slipped a disc, and it may be that you know another, you know, few weeks perhaps or whatever on some sort of anti-inflammatory painkiller, and it may be fine, which would be best case scenario, wouldn't it? So that's what we're hoping for. And he gave her an injection, and then gave me a prescription of. Oxycom to bring home. Where is the blue? Where's my... It needs filling up. I've actually ordered some more from Ludlow because this pot um, is very nearly finished. There's, there's actually probably more in there than most people would use in a lifetime, but that wouldn't be my lifetime. And I've ordered some more of these sets because we have got more orders and no sets. So lovely Meru and Andrew, who you will have come across, no doubt, while watching these live videos because they um, they watch them as well. They're putting the sets together. In fact, I think they might be on their way today, so that's good. So I'm just hinting at where the shadows lie. Well, Lisa takes a very important phone call. She's writing stuff down. So it's quite fun doing something like this because it's Really, you know, there's no hard and fast. There are no, no firm edges. I'm just but doing a very basic background. What's she saying? What was that? Uh, Who? Sir, you know, oh, Sir David. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. Oh, good. Yes, we have many titled people buying stuff, don't we? Yes. We've two in the last week. Oh, I know Ken McDermott. He what? He sent it for Sir David. Yes, he was doing. Oh, I do. Do you know who his son-in-law is? Over the way. 
the agent. Yeah, he's lovely, Ken. You see, mixing with the aristocracy. Who'd have thought it? <laughs> Hello, Sheena. Oh, yes, Ken's lovely. Just tip you up. Fancy that. Did you have to speak quite loudly? Yeah. <laughs> you see what I mean, though? Yeah. He's really sweet. He's 90. We're just spreading joy, aren't we? I think that makes it quite a lot more interesting, textural and tone wise. And we've got some lovely empty pieces here that we can put stuff in, as well as when we take off the masking fluid uh, and you get the pure white of the snow. Uh, I'm going to. Oh! Hi, have you ever painted any of your dogs? Yes, I have. Um, wait, there, Elizabeth Marshall. I've painted quite a few of my sausage dogs, but that's lovely Dorothy. So I'm now going to go for a slightly cooler. Nope, I'm going to put some trees in. <laughs> we seem to be missing some of the usual suspects, i.e. Mel, Heather, Margaret, Jules, Marianne Ray. Where are you? Right, so I'm going to get a like a one stroke brush and again I'm just drawing on what is exactly outside the window here. Green in the foreground and then trees. So what colour? Let's use this filthy scruffy empty bit. What can you see here? And again, I'm just picking up bits of colour from off the board. Test it. I quite like it to be redder than that. Just get a slightly smaller one and do a um, same sort of thing but with a smaller brush.
So you've sort of got this lovely tangle of ducks in the foreground and then a tangle of, of um, uh, trees in the background. I think Pipey's got a meeting tomorrow with somebody to try and get a license so that we can fell some of the some of the ash trees uh, here before they come down and destroy things like cars and sheds. It's really serious. I think it's going to change the face of the countryside. So I'm going to get a slightly smaller brush again and do the next stage. Oof. If only I could find a smaller brush. Ha. Here we are. It's a bit more red in it, I think. Yeah, I think that should work. That may be a tiny bit of darkness. I quite like this, just holding the brush with my fingertips and just sort of letting it, letting it um, take its own path almost. At least I don't have to worry about the sound and the, everything going off on this Huawei. Emma, who gave it to me, was here last night, poor thing. <gasps> There's such a lot of packing to do because like, all the calendars and the diaries and the cards and the scarves, they, they all sort of, you know, they, they arrive like, all nicely packed and labelled, like with product information or whatever. And uh, I'm not too big or clever to do it, I just don't have time. Uh, and I was stamping labels last night, but Emma just works like a demon. <sighs> Louise, you're very welcome. I've just had a message from one of you who ordered some stuff all the way from Holland, and we sent it, and it's apparently arrived. I'm just gonna tip you up. Hello, oh, Philip Browell. Charlotte! I thought you were working, Charlotte. I spoke to your mother the other day and she said that you're just getting in your car and getting on and working. Jane Lamb, hello, how are you? Give my love to Jim. Love you, Jim. So, yeah, he's coming together quite nicely. Well, I'm, I'm going to do a little bit more on the body of these ducks so that... Uh, they don't look pasty against the background. Tangle, quite screwed up. <laughs> it is, isn't it? A tangle of tangle of ducks. Oh, do you know what? Last night, me and my friend Gillian, we went, uh, I looked at the weather forecast and it looked like the sun was going to come out at between two and three o'clock. So I said, right, let's have a swim in the river at three. When do you do the eyes? Patience, Julie Griffiths, patience. I do the eyes when I feel like it, quite often at the end. Anyway, going back to me, me, me. Uh, so we arranged to swim, so she turned up at three, we had everything ready, hot drinks, hot water bottle, all that stuff. Um, because what we do after we've had a swim, get a hot water bottle, and we have a hot water bottle, and we wrap our towels and socks and whatnot around it, boiling hot when we set off. So when we get out of the water, you've got your lovely warm towel, quick, 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 and, um, and your socks and stuff. And then the hot water bottle still has loads of heat left in for just here. And it makes all the difference. And we also have, we each have a little flask with hot drink inside. So, um, 
So we get that down and warm from the inside out and also from the outside in. And um, it's very effective. But anyway, when we got to the river, which is a beautiful, beautiful spot, uh, not the usual, but a place that is available at the moment on account of lockdown. And uh, we got down to the trees right next to the river and I went, oh, look, and a kingfisher just popped up a couple of meters from my feet on the river's edge and just flew across the river. And it was, I mean, the color, you know, people say, oh, a flash of kingfisher, or oh, kingfisher blue, but it really is startling. The only other thing you see quite that color is um, a dragonflies. Anyway, so that was the first thing. And then I happened to be turning away when there was an almighty splosh. And Gillian went, oh, and I looked at the water and there were big ripples going away like that in the pool. And she just went, there's not enough room here. She went, oh, that's amazing. You know, we're talking about, you know, 20 plus pound salmon, I would say from what she was saying. And she is not a big liar. And then a little bit later, I saw one more like, probably more like that sort of size go, moop like that right up near the waterfall where we because we swim up to the waterfall it's about i don't know 70 or 80 meters it's not a big waterfall and then we have a sort of jacuzzi and then shoot off in the flow of the water which gives you a bit of speed anyway there we are uh i just thought you'd like to know that <clears throat> and before you ask yes it was quite cold but it wasn't brutally cold which it was the other day. I, I, I can't understand how the river could warm up in such a short space of time, but it, it just seems, it seems like it has. I mean, it, it's quite mild outside, so I guess it's... I guess it's, um, is that okay? Right. Gosh, listen to the wind blowing away. So that one there. So we can use the shadow on the one behind to define this one here. Oops, a little bit dark, darker than I had intended. Okay. 
Okay, so let's just get a little bit more. They've got a bit of form. The Lisa's gone quiet, you're probably wondering why, and I'll tell you why, because she is now taking all the paintings off the wall in the room on the front of the house because we're doing a complete rehang, which we usually do maybe two or three times a year. Uh, once before the Christmas exhibition, <laughs> uh, once before the summer exhibition, and then quite often another one in between. Um, so this is, uh, this is sort of ha-ha, the Christmas exhibition, because I'm very much hoping that once this lockdown's over, we'll be able to open in a safe, COVID-safe environment. Um, but whatever happens, we need to get all the new paintings on the wall anyway. Margaret, this is no time to be joining us. Have you seen what time it is? Mel, didn't know you were on. I know I gave you very, very, very little notice today because I wasn't sure because I've been to the uh, uh, up early doing horses and dogs, da -dee da -dee da sitting on my phone going, mm -mm -mm, things to do. And then I had to take poor little Dorothy to the vet and it's a sort of 35, 40 minute journey there. And they they always say, your appointment is um, half past nine. You, they never see you when they say they will. Uh, so anyway, I didn't get back here till about quarter to 11. Stuff to do, things to order. And I thought, you know, it would be nice just to do a little bit of painting with you lovely people. I was sweeping up leaves. You can sweep up leaves. Don't bother, the wind will do it for you. We're filling a bloody form. It's okay. No foul language, Mel. Anyway, I think that's probably about enough. I'll just... So it's quite a nice, it's quite a sweet painting, I think. Hopefully it will be. It's obviously a bit more work to do on the bills and the eyes. Um, a bit more colour in the background and then... And complete the legs. <laughs> it's all right, it's all right, Mel and then take the white masking fluid off and I think it'll be quite sweet. Anyway, it's been lovely spending a bit of time with you. Peace in a day of chaos. So, may see you tomorrow. I'll try and give you a bit more notice. Hello, Jan Renton, you're late. I was assuming you'd do more now that Mel and I have arrived. You assumed wrong. It's too much to do. Anyway, um, it's been lovely being spending with this quiet time. Peace. Hope you have a lovely day and I will see you again soon. Bye. <laughs>